I don't know if anyone's noticing, but how they're slowly but surely trying to change the laws. Yeah. If you look at things now, I just want y'all to think about something. You can probably pull this up mm. on when we had our day of Easter, mm. our day of celebrating our savior, mm. our president who was in the office mm. decided to make that particular day mm. trans day. Mm. This particular day, I'm, I'm a ruffle of a few people feathers, but I don't care either. I'm just, right. I'm with you. Okay. Right, right. I'm talking to you right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So all of a sudden now you're going to change. You, you want to make this particular day out of all days. Yeah. You could have did the day before you could have did the day after, even though, I mean, because it, it, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me unless the spirit of the Antichrist is already working its way in this world. Mm -hmm. It's already here. It's already here. We're not waiting on it. Oh, no. The spirit of the Antichrist is already here. We're, 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 it's already here. And because it's already here, now you have little things and little laws. And here's my, my fear. And then I'm going to pass it to you. Are you good? My, not my, my fear, but my concern with the body of Christ is when I read Revelations 13 and 9. A 13 and 10, bro. And I saw something and it made it checked me because I'm guilty as well. Mm -hmm. But I saw something in Revelations 13. Where that? All right. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And then he says something. John says, Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Yeah. Let me break it down because what we're not realizing is you ever hear people say, well, God is building my faith. Mm -hmm. He's building my patience. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we're thinking it's to go to another level tangibly. Yeah. Or to go to a different type of position. Yeah. No, he's building our faith and our patience because there's coming a time mm -hmm. where we're going to have to stand up for what we believe in because we ain't, we ain't going to be able to buy certain things in yeah. certain places. We ain't going to be. So what does that mean? We have to be equipped in every area of our lives. Yeah. We can't just be equipped. Um, um, spiritually, we got to have farms. Yeah. We got to have places where people can come and buy and still use without having to have the mark of the beast. Yeah. These are the things that we're going to have to endure. The Bible says we're going to have to endure these things. Yeah. We can't avoid it. Yeah. And the problem is we're so busy in the church. And this is, again, <laughs> we're so busy in the church trying to feel good because things does happen and I get life happens. We have to get back to the basics of what the church is. Yeah. The church is we we're having this meeting to see what God is saying. Yeah. What is he saying? What do we need to do? Yeah. How do we need to move yeah. as a people? Because if we're operating like we're up and that, like they did in the book of Acts, when we're helping one another mm -hmm. and building one another, mm -hmm. we'll never be without. We'll mm -hmm. be prepared for those times that are coming and there will be no lost sheep. When we preach the word or proclaim the gospel, it's really not about the style. It's so much about the substance. Yeah, it's really about the substance. We right. need substance yeah. because our generation, I, I can I, I understand that we have this thing where we just have to have an understanding. Yeah. Of why this has to you can't just tell us nothing. Yeah. And you can, you can't just tell us you gotta do this, this, and this. Right. Because it's not going to bring about a level of conviction there. There has to be an understanding. There has to be a substance. There has to be the Holy ghost has to be in your word. So that way we are able to tap in, in a different type of way, because I told my barber this, I told my barber this, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I told him, I said, I said, it's just like, cause he was talking about Noah. I said, this is what, the last times and the Bible says this is yeah. how the last times was going to be. Yeah. I said, we're going to have this big old ship. Mm -hmm. Everybody's invited. Mm -hmm. Here we go with that word ship again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it back. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good recall. <laughs> <laughs> but that we, it's like a big ship that every body is invited to. Yeah. And we're saying, listen, the rain is coming. Yeah. The yep. rain is coming. Yep. The signs are there. It's written on the wall. Mm -hmm. 
And if in turn we don't wake up as the body, mm-hmm. then we're going to miss out on something. We're 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 going to miss out on something that God has promised us. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you brought up the the transgender thing. Because, <laughs> no, for I, I'm really happy because I'm big on creating spaces, creating mm-hmm. environments for people to comment and talk and whatever and all this jazz and whatnot. I don't I don't care if it gets if it gets heated, it gets whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all find common ground, whatever. That's that. But if your your platform, and I'm kind of taking a little bit of a pivot, but I'm, it's going to make sense. Sure. If your platform is about creating conversations, then you have to be open and welcoming to all conversations. Right. So there's this post. This guy, he's preaching about he's preaching against Trump, pretty much. Mm-hmm. He's preaching against Trump, and he's talking about and he's hooping and hollering. That's why I, I like what you said about the substance. We care more about substance now, and that's one thing I can honestly say about this generation. Mm-hmm. We're hungry for substance. We're yeah. hungry for truth. We don't want no hypocritical stuff. Right. We don't want no fake stuff. Right. We want the we want the fullness of truth. We Absolutely. want the real thing. Absolutely. The full truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. Absolutely. That's what we want. Absolutely. And if you're not living in that way, guess what? We're gonna see that. Absolutely. Our, I, I would say this this generation's discernment meter is probably more on high alert than any other generation mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. because of the fact that we know, oh. Something ain't right with that. Mm. The signs are already there. Like, oh, that person needs help. But anyway, back to the point. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, it's like, it was his comment, and he said that this guy is hooping about Trump. Meanwhile, Biden declared Easter Sunday trans- transgender day of visibility. which mm-hmm. It's messed up. Yes, he shouldn't have done that. Uh, he could have picked any other day in the world. Mm-hmm. And so, but the thing, the truth is, and I looked it up because my cousin had brought it up to my attention. And he was like, you know, this has been around since 2009. And I was like, oh, wow. Really? So the thing is, is that, and I Googled it, and it says the Transgender Day of Visibility started in 2009 by trans activist Rachel Crandall Crocker as a day to celebrate and raise awareness of transgender people. And the event has always fallen on March 31st. And I find that interesting because it's like, and it's not to, you know, shut down anything you just said, because I agree wholeheartedly Mm -hmm. uh, with you on that, because he could have for the past, what, three or four years of his of his uh, Mm -hmm. camp of his um, his uh, presidency. presidency, Mm -hmm. He's never made this big move to do that. Mm -hmm. Like nobody was thinking about it on March 31st. Mm -hmm. Nobody else in the world. You have, if, if there's old news clippings and stuff of, of things of people highlighting that prior to this year, I get it. You know Mm -hmm. what this year, it was such a big deal because out of, out of the blue, Biden signs this executive order, you know, pretty much stamping it and putting it into history. And it's like, but why would you do that? Right. But the thing is, it's like, and it goes to your point. It's been around since 2009. Mm -hmm. Like, this spirit, this spirit of the Antichrist has been in the land for a very long time. Yes, sir. These laws and these things have been changing for a very long time. Yes, sir. We can't just be sh- asleep at the wheel right. <laughs> and uncognizant of what's going on because of the fact that we so, ugh, yeah, I'm really about to piss some people off, because we're really so into the whole going to church and all these different things, the hooping and hollering, the shouting and all this other stuff. No, we need substance. Yes, we sir. need truth. We need to know, like the Bible says, my people perish for what? A lack of knowledge. Yes, sir. And it's not just knowledge in this because people don't like to read this, but it's lack of knowledge of what's going on in the world. Yes, sir. As far as like what laws are being tra- or what laws are being passed, what things are going on, not paying attention to what's happening outside of the four walls of the church, mm-hmm. not paying attention to what's happening to outside of your workplace, outside of school, wherever you're at, or even outside of the four walls of your home. It's a lot that's going on. You have to be knowledgeable of these things and you have to know. And not only that, but your faith has to be secured in this. Yes, sir.